Okay, welcome to part two of the tutorial for creating custom lakes for Pish Tech's game, VR Sport Fishing. Uh, really good idea to watch these steps in order because they do build upon the concepts covered in the earlier ones. And uh, we're just going to jump right in, and in this part two, we are going to create a really trivial lake very quickly. Remember, you have that, uh, that file called lakedefmaster.txt. Very first thing you want to do, open that up in Notepad or some other text editor and create your lake. Um, when you name your files, really good idea to name them starting with your initials or something that makes it unique to you and unique to the lake so that your file names don't overlap other people's if you end up uh, swapping lake files and things like that. We're going to call this Simple Lake. So I'm going to name this PJH Simple Lake um, dot LAK that tells the game that it's going to be a lake definition file. Save as type all files, otherwise Notepad will add a TXT on the end up here. We don't want that. Alright, we are going to uh, name this Simple Lake and the only other parameter we're going to change for right now is we are going to give this, uh, we need a height field. Again, PJH, simple lake height field. If something goes wrong when you're creating a lake, the very first thing to look at is your file names. Did you type it right? Did you uh, type it the same way you created? Well, we're going to create this file right now. Make sure your image name, uh, actual file name, matches what you say in here. If it doesn't, things will not work. Okay, I'm going to save the file, and I'm going to bring up Picture Publisher. Again, you can use any image editing tool you like. Um, this is one that I like. It's uh, readily available on eBay most of the time. Uh, fairly cheap. There's free ones. There's uh, expensive ones. Use what you like. As long as it has the power, uh, the features that you need, doesn't matter what you use. Okay, we're going to start out by creating our height field. Um, we're going to create a new image. Um, this needs to be grayscale, not color. But a grayscale image, 1024 by 1024 is a good rule of thumb for your uh, your height fields. They can be smaller if your lake's not that complicated. I don't recommend going bigger. It does have to be square, and it should be a power of two in size. So 1024, 512, or 256. All right, new image. It's white. What does white mean? This is our height field. White means the highest point on your map. If we take a black paintbrush and paint a line, we just made a valley. Black means the lowest point on your map. We got a hard edge, though. We have solid white to solid black. In the game, that's going to be a sheer cliff. Maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want to use a feathered tool. Again, different tools have a different way of doing this. But now if I draw a line and we zoom in on it, notice that it's fading from white to black with gray in between. Instead of a hard edge, now we have a slope. All right? Uh, that may be what we want in the game. I'm going to take an even bigger paintbrush really quickly here, and I'm going to draw a blob of a lake map, uh, just some squiggles out here. Maybe we'll leave a little island on it right now. So there's our height field, high ground, low ground. We're going to save this file as pjh simple lake height field dot bmp. want to make sure that this file name here matches the file name I entered up here, and it does match. So we are now going to start the game. Anytime you create or edit your files, restart the game or your changes will not take effect. And when you start up the game, remember Lake Space Tester. That's the user profile you want to use when trying out your custom lakes. Um, it enables a bunch of special features that are really important. Um, we're going to do a new trip and we are going to find our new lake by uh, clicking previous lake. When the first time uh, or any time you change a lake, you're going to see this when you when it first loads it. Mapping lake structure. The game is scanning your map and figuring out what's a high point, what's a low point, what's a drop off of a, uh, a bay, those kinds of things, so the fish can react to your lake appropriately. It takes a few seconds, depending on the speed of your computer and the complexity of the lake. But as soon as that's done, we will be uh, in the middle of the lake because we left our bait shop right in the middle at 3,000 by 3,000 on a 6,000 uh, foot square map. That's the default in our text file. Notice right away that the lake looks white. Uh, we'll click start fishing here and we'll take the bass boat. Why does it look white? Well, we haven't given it any texture yet, so it's just a blob. Um, I'm going to press M to bring up the little map 
Here is the lake, just like we drew it. Uh, notice, though, that it's actually rotated and mirrored. Uh, the reason it's rotated and mirrored is uh, is rather complicated, but if you want it to match exactly a, a realistic lake, you'll want to flip and rotate your, uh, your height field and your other map images as you create them to make it uh, match the view you want here. You, we can also do our full screen view. Notice we got an extra island in the center of the lake. That's because that's where our height field, or our uh, bait shop is located, and the game automatically adjusted the height field for us to put that, uh, let's take a first person view where we can pan around, to put the bait shop there. All right, why to use Lake Tester um, user profile? Well, because your boat is magical. Your boat can do things that you normally can't do. On your number, not your number keypad, but above the letter keys, press the number two and your boat will seem to disappear. Your fish locator, your body, and your outboard will remain, but your boat just became invisible. That improved your visibility for one thing, but more than that, it enabled some special features. Try driving your boat. Now you'll discover it can do something your boat never could do before. It can go on land. It will go right up a hill. Uh, you can go up the highest peaks and view your lake from anywhere you want. Um, okay, next magic step is the page up and page down keys. Press page up. I'm going to turn so we can uh, see the bait shop as we do this. Notice there's already other boats uh, out here using your custom lake. All right, page up key elevates us. Now we can fly. Notice the flashing uh, over here. That's what's happening here is it's having trouble deciding whether to draw the water or the land. And these kinds of things you may see while you're testing a lake because you're viewing it from perspectives the game isn't really designed to show you. When you're actually fishing on the lake, you will not see that, so don't worry about it. Okay, so page up lets me fly. While I'm airborne, I can still drive or I can come to a stop. My top speed is also greatly increased. While flying, my boat will do about 200 miles an hour or a little more than that even. Okay, well, I'm going to slow to a stop uh, over near the... Uh, the bait shop island again. Okay, full stop. It accelerates and stops much more quickly. Page down key lowers you again, including taking you right underwater. Um, I'm going to drop my anchor so we don't drift. There's our locator in our invisible boat. But uh, we are looking at the bottom of the lake. It's pretty boring. We have white. We gave it no texture. But if we had fish in here, we could see them. Okay? Another way to check out your lake. When you're underwater, your magic boat will be much slower, but will turn much more tightly. So you have a submarine to go explore. If you want to see what the fish are doing, check out your weed beds. Have fun. It's actually a lot of fun to uh, explore a new lake with your magic uh, flying submarine boat. All right. Next magic key. Uh, three will put you back in your boat. And it will disable everything normal. Now it will run aground if we uh, drive into land. All right. Next key. Eight. 8 is going to elevate the fish above the surface of the water. Now I'm going to zoom in on them. Remember the default in the uh, lake, lake def uh, master file has a handful of largemouth bass in the lake. So we have largemouth bass. We can change that later. But we've got all these largemouth around here. And if we press 8, it elevates them above the surface, or at least it draws them that way. They still think and act like they're down at the bottom of the lake, but pressing 8 repeatedly it turns them on turns them off okay so quick way to see where your fish are located now press 9 now you have super clear water now with the zoom key we can uh, zoom in and see the fish more directly that also works when you're underwater so if I turn on our magic boat and lower us below the surface now we have super clear water where we can see the bottom and see the fish alright so again those are your magic keys uh, 8 for magic fish 9 for clear water two and three for magic boat, page up and page down to fly while you are in your magic boat. But our lake looks pretty bland. It looks like it just snowed, it, uh, we don't have any weeds. This is pretty boring, so in the next segment we are going to add some texture to our simple little lake.